So good morning, everyone. So I will be discussing about phenomenological research. So this is a research design used mostly by um, a qualitative, um, qualitative research. So it's definition. So a, a phenomenological research is a qualitative research approach um, that seeks to understand and describe the universal essence of a phenomenon. So it also investigates um, the everyday experiences of human beings while suspending the researcher's preconceived assumption about the phenomenon. So it studies um, lived experiences to gain deeper insight into how people understand those experiences. Um, so in other words, uh, phenomenological research um, is a research wherein the researcher um, tries to understand the point of view, uh, tries to understand a phenomenon using the point of view of the person or the people experiencing it or living that um, situation. So what are the characteristics of a phenomenological research? So phenomenological research design is descriptive. So um, since its goal um, is to understand a phenomenon from the point of view of um, the participants or the respondents, um, researchers try to be as verbatim as possible when doing research. So next one is um, qualitative phenomenological research design. Aims to uncover what a particular experience means to a group of people and how they um, and how they experience it. So for example, um, in the phenomenon of being the only child. So what does it entail to the responsive? So are they positive or are they negative? And bakit sila positive and bakit din sila negative? So ano yung possible implication on what, um, bakit yun yung iniisip nila? So bakit din yung results sa kanila no, um, no phenomenon na yun? So the third one is it requires researchers to set aside their prejudice and a priori assumption and focus mainly on the immediate experience. So of course, um, as a person, um, remember you have your you you grow to have um your own ideas, your own experiences, and you grow in a different environment, and therefore you maybe have um bias. So, but as a researcher, um, you have to let go of your assumptions. And I guess, um, and then listen to what um, they're saying. So you can say, uh, that, no, that's not right. Hindi yan, hindi yan, parang hindi yan totoo. Parang hindi yan yung nangyari. Or sabihin mo na, ah, oo, oh, yan, tama yan. So because um, you're actually not acknowledging um, their experience and instead you're putting yourself um, in their situation. So for example, um, you as a researcher, you want to know um what are their thoughts about um the martial law. For so your participants are those who live uh, during the martial law era. So um for some people, um martial law can be positive and it can also be um, negative. So of course, uh, as a person who have done of course this or her research um prior to the research proper. You know, um, syempre meron ka ng mga um, ideas, you've read articles. Um, so, you have, um, you have an uh, idea, you have, like, um, understanding on what really happened there. So, um, for example, so for martial law, pwede negative pala yung nangyari sa kanila, pwede ding positive. So, as a researcher, hindi mo pwede sabihin na one is correct and one is wrong. Because that's their experiences. That's what happened to them. So um although syempre uh, as a as a researcher you also don't need to like um uh, you don't have to acknowledge their opinion facts already. So because um syempre kailangan pa din ng proper research to know um what really transpired during such time. So ayan. Um uh, for the fourth one um uh, it requires the researcher to first describe Describe the lived experiences objectively and then reflect on the description with reference to the existing theories about it. Um, so, for example, um, you found out on an interview with a participant about um, something, and now you try to um, um, now you try to incorporate um, 
uh, you now you try to incorporate what they have said in an existing um, study in an existing theory. So um, it's either you agree with um, an existing study or you disagree due to the um, result of your research, as well as, um, for example, you'll have an additional information that you found out during your, uh, your research. So that's the fourth uh, one. So next is the methods you know, um, on how to conduct a phenomenological research. So first is the participant observation. So this is where the researcher is immersed on the day-to-day -day activities of the participants. So if, for example, um, if you've watched um, documentaries like um, for the Cara David, um, Adam Araujo, um, wherein they join the everyday, uh, the everyday uh, activity of the participants of their um, interview. Just so they can um, understand their situation better. Um, they can observe and then understand uh, their situation better. So next is the interview. Next is the conversation with participants. So it's very important to build rapport towards your um, participants, your um, your interviewees, because um, you have to make them feel that you are um, trustful. They trust you enough to um, say what they want to say um, without, you know, um, na mahihiya ba sila kung ano sasabihin nila or na baka feeling nila ina-judge mo sila. So, ayan. It's very important for them to be trusting, to be trusting you with the information they are about to share. So, next is the analysis of personal text. So, ano bang ibig sabihin no mga sagot nila? So, that's it. So, next is the action research. So, this is where um you use the results of your observation to um, how do you call this? To make a situation or improve their situation to, you know, put them in the better um, place um, or something like that. So, it's not necessarily like you want to make a solution for them. But um, you can suggest what can happen in the future. So, so next is the focus meeting or the focus group discussion. So, this is where um you invite... Uh, a group of people with the same situation in order for them to share with each other um, the situation they're in. So, remember, um, just because you're in the same situation does not mean that you, um, the way you look at it is the same. So, this is where you, um, you know, let them meet, let them talk about, share their experiences or something like that. So, um, also, Apela, sorry. So, also, please keep in mind we should keep in mind that regardless of the method used um, for the um, qualitative uh, phenomenological research design, you must focus on the research issue and avoid influencing the participants. So you should also show empathy, and as I have mentioned earlier, and build or establish a good rapport to gain um, deep insight, deep insight um, into their experiences. So, ayan, ayan. so this is the some a sample procedure on how to conduct a phenomenological research. So we also have to keep in mind that this is um this is not set in stone. So this is not permanent. This is just an example because um researchers are free to do whatever uh, they can. So the first one is the identification of the phenomena. So of course, uh, as a researcher, you want to um to have a subject on what you want to research about. So this is where it. Uh, you have to identify what you want. Next is the development of a detailed description of the phenomenon. So of course, you're you have your task to make your research about it, and you know from there you're going to learn, gain insights, and of course, um, establish a good like for example, you're going to do um an interview. So you you get to ask, um you know um you may may laman na mga questions for the interview. And what do you really want to know on that phenomenon? So number three is bracketing personal prejudice and a priori assumption. So bring that to behind the na. Kung alam mo yung problema, alam mo din yung mga solution. So for the third one, um, you of, of course um you have to look into yourself. You have to self check. Um, what do you think are your personal prejudices and assumption towards that topic? 
towards the research you're going to do in order to be um you know to call yourself out in case um uh, you're doing something that are a uh, major bias na like mm-hmm. bias ka na. so you you have to self check to check yourself always um for that next is the collection of data from the participants so ayan so this is where we gather data na from interviews um uh focus group discussion so that's what you do. number f- fifth one is the data analysis so from the um data you have collected of course you are going to analyze each one and you know try to incorporate it with the uh, uh, existing existing research um study that has already you know in order to make like a comparison or additional information or updated information um regarding such phenomena so number six, the development of a composite description of the phenomenon. So of course, from the data you have um, inferred, you have um, gone, gotten. Uh, this is where you have like, um, um, parang sure ka na. Like, yun na yung, um, uh, yun na yung result, conclusion. Um, and then that's where you also get the recommendation. For the seventh one is the pres- the last one is the presentation of the description. So, um, since you're done with your research, um, of course you have to present it, or you have to publish it to the community. So, ayan. and ayan, that's the last one. Thank you for listening.